Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 3rd. First up, I would like to thank a Canadian friend of mine, Wild Bill 1006 If you remember the last TDD report, I talked about some weird U.S. laws that are still on the books. Well, evidently Canada has much of the same thing. This comes from LUFA, L-U-F-A dot C-A. I'll put a link to the bottom of all the articles I talk about as usual. Here are some laws in Canada. This is a city law. If you are released from prison, it is required that you are given a handgun with bullets and a horse so you can ride out of town. And a British Columbia provincial law is it is illegal to kill a Sasquatch. And another um, New Brunswick provincial law is driving on the roads is not allowed. I think that's back during the times probably when they were switching over from horses to cars and people were rather concerned that the cars would scare the horses, which they probably did at first. But take a look at that, too. There's a whole list of it, and some of them are, are very funny. Some of them, actually, I was aware of, like the fact of uh, the law for Canadian content on, on radio stations. But uh, a lot of them are, are something new that I've just found out about. So if you get a chance, check that out. Thanks again, Wild Bill 1006 If you get a chance, check out his channel, too. Very good uh, moto vlogger. Next up, if you have a smartphone, and a lot of us more and more are getting smartphones, there's an application that you may uh, have on your phone and not be aware of. It's called Carrier IQ. And let me get up the article here. This is from the Huffington Post. There is a person that's a pretty well-known hacker and explorer of these kind of things called Trevor Eckhart. And he learned about the Carrier IQ on smartphones, and when he started publishing the information about it because this application may be more than just tracking you it may also be a keylogger on phones he was actually shut down they uh, filed copyright the carrier IQ company filed copyright against and shut him down from publishing information about this but then the electronic frontier foundation EFF.org came to his rescue and carrier IQ backed down so now you can actually in this article you can scroll down and you can see the YouTube video where he talks about this application carrier IQ it seems to be real common on Android phones but I also learned it's on the Apple iPhone but it's just not um, the default is that it's not enabled uh, also Nokia claims that they none of their products actually have carrier IQ so if you have a Nokia phone um, it's probably not something to be concerned about but to me yeah having a an application that could possibly be a key logger also now they claim they're just using it like most places claim that it's just marketing statistics and they you know just it's all uh, randomized it's uh, anonymous to which they may very well be doing but because they do have the potential to use this even as a key logger and log your exact text messages and stuff like that I think a lot of people are concerned and especially if you have a phone where the default is that it's enabled um, according to Trevor it's uh, next to impossible to shut it off or get it removed from your phone so I think this is something maybe to be concerned about if you get a chance to check out this Huffington Post article another one on lo along the same kind of lines but one I'm less concerned about this goes back to Black Friday two different malls uh, one was in Southern California and another one of the malls was in Richmond Virginia are trying out an application where they install small antennas throughout the mall and they track cell phone users. They don't track your cell phone use, but they track where you're going to. They uh, use use the cell phone uh, signal that it sends out to, to be able to see what stores you go into, what areas of stores you tend to linger into, uh, whether somebody um, goes from, like, say, a J.C. Penney store straight to a Starbucks or not. It's information a lot of stores probably could really use, and they do post it on. They, they claim that they posted it in the malls, and that you could opt out by just simply switching your phone off. I don't have a big concern about that myself because I can see stores really using that information even to help us as consumers. I mean, if they have a section of the store that they've set up a special display and nobody seems to either go to it or seems to linger there, um, why not find out statistically that, you know, you're kind of wasting your time, you know, do something different. And also you have the option of not being a part of it. So I don't see this as being a big concern. If you're in a, an enclosed mall anyway, they can always rig cameras and track you exactly with identity and everything if they choose to. So um, I think this giving people the option of using your cell phone and opting out of it is, is absolutely fine myself. But if anybody has comments below and they don't, they think it's a bad idea even though you can't opt out, uh, please leave a comment and uh, share your opinion out or make a video if you choose to. And next up is... 
Oh, this is going to be my rant on Mythbusters. Um, if you watch the very latest Mythbusters, now I know uh, last show I, I ranted about um, Carrie Byron's show, Head Rush, because of the fact they use a lot of Mythbusters material rather than original material from her. On the last show, they were taking viewers' myths, um, and this one was particularly about using a can of starting fluid or ether to... Um, to put a tire back on, you can use it. You can use the explosive force from this. If a tire is unseated from the bead, you can use the explosive force. I wouldn't recommend anybody ever actually really do this, but in emergency, truck drivers have known this for years. How you can spray ether into a tire, and then give it a few seconds to mix with the oxygen, give it a little bit of a spark or a little bit of a flame, and then boom, the tire will be back on the bead. I mean, I've seen it several times, even before the MythBusters did this, and it does actually work. Um, the funny thing about it, though, is they took it a little bit farther and claimed that it was supposed to inflate the tire, too, as far as, you know, keeping it inflated. And the person that asked the question wasn't even talking about that. I think the person that asked the question to the Mythbusters to explore the myth kind of realized that you do have to also put air on the tire. I mean, obviously, if the gas in the tire is heated up, when it cools down, it's going to contract. I mean, that's kind of like an old high school physics experiment kind of thing. And I, I, I think the Mythbusters, for some reason, just kind of got weird about that and didn't realize that, you know, when you do pop it back on the bead, you also do have to have some way of adding air to it. I, I don't know. I just think in that case they got it wrong. Still, one of my favorite programs, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a Mythbusters fan, but I think on that one they kind of blew it too. If anybody else saw that episode, uh, uh, why don't you give me your opinion on, on how they handled that one? I mean, they did show it to themselves and they proved that the uh, explosion from the ether starting fluid can reseed a tire easily. In fact, the first time they did it was rather unexpected. I noticed they jumped back. But, uh, yeah, I think they could have handled that one a little better. But all in all, still, I think one of the greatest programs on TV. Great science show, too. So that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.